Hello everyone and welcome to the Guna Factory, Arsenal 2, Brighton 0 and that takes us to the top of the Premier League again. So we'll be talking everything about the game but a couple of performances in particular were incredible. We'll be going through that but also the title race, our main rivals both drop points. What does that mean for Arsenal? So let's get into it. So we're going to start on the game and that was an absolutely incredible game to watch. I don't know about you lot but I thoroughly enjoyed the whole game mainly because we was never really in doubt for any section of the game we completely bossed it from the first whistle now when you play like that and you're playing so well and you leave it so late to get the first goal of course you have them thoughts where you're thinking oh my god this might not be the day and and if they catch us on the break then then we could be in trouble but that first goal from Jesus brilliant play it was just so good to watch the team dominate a game like that I mean it's all good and well beating these lower league table teams but when you play a good side a well-structured side a well-managed and coached side like Brighton and you produce a result like that it's it's so satisfying I love it and even De Zerbi, after the game he come out and said he basically said they battered us they was the better team and they haven't had a defeat like that this season so so that's just credit to the performance that everybody put on basically so all the players in my opinion had a good game apart from one which we will get into but we'll start with a goalkeeper Araya he looks solid in goal you know I mean we've seen in his performances in recent weeks where he's just looked dodgy but we didn't really have any of their moments mainly because Brighton didn't really attack our goal like that most of the possession was in their half with our ball, with our players carrying the ball forward so it wasn't really a, a concern in this game with a goalkeeper Ben White as well probably not back to his brilliant best uh, since the injury but again a solid enough performance and hopefully that just gives him the momentum now to carry that on getting back to the player he was last season and he will do eventually no doubt about that at all centre-backs Gabriel and Saliba for every sort of breakaway chance that Brighton did get Saliba and Gabriel were solid as usual there for me the the best centre-back partnership in the world and people might not agree with that but but I urge you to to find me a better centre-back partnership than Gabriel and Saliba in world football and I don't think there is one and then that brings us on to Zinchenko who unfortunately for me he's probably our weak link at the minute I mean the amount of times I've watched him over the past two or three games and he's just so lazy in possession he's playing lazy passes and the passes are not even that difficult to make so I can't understand how he's making so many mistakes I mean he works hard to get back but he shouldn't be making them mistakes like even mistakes where there's no players around him at all there's no need to to give the ball away but he's, he's playing it into their players in, in silly moments and then there's like a three on two against us and it's just like this is not needed so I cannot wait for either Tommy Asu or Yuri and Timber to return because Zinchenko was so good for us at one point but these last few games I'm getting really frustrated with how he's playing and how we see in the game so Zinchenko might be a slight downer but I tell you who's not Declan Rice oh my god this player is incredible I urge anybody out there to tell me you imagine Declan Rice would be this good for Arsenal he's not only one of our best players he's he's the best centre mid in the league I mean it's just so frightening his ability so calm so assured so good defensively driving with the ball finding passes winning all his duels he's a leader you can tell you can see him on the pitch he's only been at the club five minutes and he's he's given out orders he's given out direction he's a real leader of men and I love watching Declan Rice play and then that leads us on to Kai Havertz a lot of us have been silenced and many of us questioned why Arteta brought him in and this is exactly why he scored four goals in six games no one can now say or wonder why Mikel Arteta brought him in. Chelsea fans, they were laughing. Can't believe you've paid 60 million for Havertz. You don't understand what you're getting. He's not very good. He's not very consistent. Well, four and six to me as a centre midfield sounds very consistent. What a purchase. What a keen eye from Arteta. He's obviously seen something in Havertz that he really fancied. Brought him in, put him in the Arsenal team, gave him starts when many people thought, ah, oh, now bring him out of the team. And now he's producing. And then Martinelli and Saka, fairly quiet performances, you would have to say, if you're comparing it to their usual high standards. I mean, Saka, you can probably forgive him a little bit because he's put in so many good performances this season. But Martinelli, although he is one of our more exciting and better players, you're looking at it and you're looking at his numbers this season and you're starting to worry slightly because how long can this form continue before Arteta has to make a decision? We know we've got Trossard waiting in the wings, who's a more than good enough player to play that position. Martinelli has to start producing something and he should have had an assist yesterday to be fair he beat his man and he played the ball into the six yard box and maybe one of the attackers Jesus should have gambled and gone for the ball because he would have had a tap in but the numbers definitely don't look kind to Martinelli 
And that brings us on to Jesus, who had a brilliant game. That skill he'd done on Dunk. I mean, I had to rewatch it this morning. It was so clever. But his play in general was just really, really good. And the fact he got his goal just lessens the pressure slightly. There's been a lot of noise the last couple of weeks because Jesus, let's be honest, he has missed quite a few chances. We've got the January transfer window coming up and a lot of players are saying we need to be going for Tony. We need to be trying to get Osman out of Napoli in January. But for me, you don't really rush into a purchase like that in January. That's more of a summer deal. And if Jesus can keep producing and keep scoring, then we're not going to have a problem anyway. The only reason people get frustrated is because he is quite profligate in front of goal. He does miss the odd chance. Although his play is always really, really good, he never really has an off game in terms of how he plays the game, his link-up play, his, his skills and everything like that. He's always on top form, but it's just the chances he misses are so frustrating sometimes. It does make you wonder, would a natural goal scorer in number nine get you more goals in these positions? So yeah, that's the players' performances individually. Like I said, as a team, we played very, very well. But that leads us on to Mikel Arteta. And of course, he got another yellow card in this game. What do I think of it? I think it was probably deserved. I'm not going to lie that you can't really do that on the side of the pitch. Now, it was a yellow card and I can see why he's frustrated. And us as fans, we probably would have done the same thing. But as the Arsenal manager, maybe you do have to take a step back and just try not to get involved in situations like this because he's got a yellow card for it. And I think the fact that he did do that, to be fair, is the only reason the Brighton player got booked. Because it didn't look like he was going to book him until Arteta done that. But Arteta does that. The Brighton player gets booked. But for his troubles, Arteta also got booked as well, though. So maybe not the best decision in the world. But like I said, heat of the moment. He's in the heat of the battle. You can't really blame him for showing a bit of passion. And that is another clean sheet for Arsenal. And after that Liverpool game, they conceded another two. So that once again gives us the title of least goals conceded in the Premier League. Which just to me offers more fuel to the claim that Gabriel and Saliba are the best centre-back partnership in the Premier League. Now I know there's variable factors that go into that other defender's goalkeeper as well. But that's always a good thing to have. Least goals conceded in the league. It means you're doing something right. So that leads us on to the Liverpool game. And after seeing how they perform in the weekend maybe a lot of people will take confidence in that but it's a totally different game you would imagine the Liverpool players are going to have a totally different mindset for this game they might have gone into that game against Man United thinking oh do you know what this is an easy team this is a team that's just lost 3-0 at home to Bournemouth so maybe the Liverpool players went into that game with a certain degree of complacency and I think that showed in the performance they couldn't really break them down it was a, a good display in terms of they had a lot of the ball they had a lot of the possession they was creating some chances but they just couldn't find that clinical edge needed to really kill the game but when they play against Arsenal it's going to be a totally different game they will go into this game knowing this is a, a title rival so three points gained against us will be the equivalent of six points so, so the game against us I'm expecting a totally different Liverpool to be fair I know they got a game midweek I don't expect them to play a full team though they're playing West Ham in the uh, the EFL Cup I think it is but the game against us they're going to have a strong team out we're going to have a strong team out and this is going to be two of the three best teams in the league competing against each other we know the game's at Anfield we know the atmosphere in there is going to be crazy but these Arsenal players are going to have to deal with that and I think we can actually go there and get a result now I don't think you can ever go to Anfield and expect the three points but if we play how we can play then we can definitely go there and win but I'd like to know everyone's thoughts on everything you've heard in this video so let me know in the comment section and if you could before you leave just quickly hit that like and subscribe button and I'll speak to you all in tomorrow's video. Gooners have a good day!